If you are still refusing to believe that George Lucas was betrayed by Bob Iger, Kathleen Kennedy, and all of the others who are in charge of Star Wars at this point in time, then you are either a fool or you are outright denying the truth because that is exactly what happened. George Lucas himself said that he felt betrayed by Star Wars by Bob Iger and we can see right here in this headline, George Lucas felt betrayed by Star Wars sequel plans, Disney CEO says. This is coming from the, the mouth of Bob Iger himself. And guess guess what? Okay, as we all know, the the uh, Lu the Lucas film, the uh, Rise of Skywalker premiere was last night. And guess who wasn't there? Guess who wasn't there? That's right, the man himself, George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars. None of this would have been possible. There would have been no Star Wars premiere last night if it wasn't for this man. And he wasn't even there. Now, for all that I know, I haven't gotten I haven't been able to find any information about whether he was just not invited or if he or if he just refused to go. Either way, it is not a good look. It is not a good look for Lucasfilm. It is not a good look for Rise of Skywalker, for Star Wars in general, for Kathleen Kennedy. It is not a good look when the creator himself is not there for the epic conclusion to the Skywalker saga. And that's exactly what they're trying to play this movie up as, is the epic conclusion. This is like the endgame version of Star Wars. No, it's not. No, it's not. No one cares about this movie. This movie is already a joke. It is an absolute joke. And no one cares. No one cares about the spoilers. No one cares about what happens with this movie. There's no hype around this movie. No one cares about this movie. There, it doesn't even come close to being in comparison to Avengers Endgame. Um, so, as we can see here, this is coming from uh, from um, Vanity Fair. And this was from the, the premiere that happened last night. So, the Rise of Skywalker premiere on Monday night began by honoring those who didn't finish the journey. So, uh, they kind of go into the whole thing with, like, uh, Carrie Fisher, Peter Mayhew, and Kenny Baker. Rest in peace to, to all of them. And thank you so much to all of them for their amazing performances over the years, uh, giving us such amazing, memorable characters that will never be forgotten. Um... So this is coming from Kathleen Kennedy. I'm so grateful to be a part of this journey as we watched new characters blossom, but I'm also bittersweet as we said goodbye to Carrie Fisher, Peter Mayhew, and Kenny Baker. Kennedy told the crowd, although the performers who originally played Leia Organa, Chewbacca, and R2-D2 each died in recent years, Kennedy noted their characters live on in The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, and then uh, she continues here... Um, Kennedy also paid tribute to someone else who was absent at the premiere, was acute who whose absence at the premiere was acutely felt, even though he is still with us, George Lucas. We could we, we wouldn't be standing here without him. Damn right you wouldn't be, uh, said Kennedy. His vision of Star Wars hanged cinematic history, and we honor his legacy tonight. Now, uh, John Tox made a, a very good point that, that she, she's kind of, she makes it sound like that he's dead, like that he's passed away just like all these other amazing people have. But George Lucas hasn't passed away. He's still here. He's still with us. Why isn't he at the premiere? Why isn't he w there with you guys celebrating the end of Star Wars, the end of the, the Skywalker saga? Well, like I said, it's either two things. Either he wasn't invited or he refused to go. And either way, it looks bad. Especially if he was invited and he refused to go, that especially looks really bad because it means that George Lucas has absolutely no desire to be there whatsoever. And even if he was invited, um, even if he wasn't invited, he probably doesn't want to be there anyway. I mean, why would he want to be there to see the destruction of the, the story that he created? I mean, I've heard from various sources that he was extremely angry over the fact that they brought back Emperor Palpatine, which he should be. Bringing back Emperor Palpatine completely just uh, makes everything that happened in Return of the Jedi, in, in the original trilogy, and even in the prequel trilogy, uh, completely irrelevant. And uh, I kind of feel like that's what what uh, Lucasfilm was setting out to do when they created the sequel trilogy, was to kind of put those types of storylines in the past, and leave them in the past, and basically make Rey the hero. 
because that's exactly what they did. They basically said, yeah, you know that whole part where, like, Darth Vader uh, kind of sacrificed himself to, to you know, try to take out the Emperor and all that, and he died in the process, and yeah, he was kind of the chosen one by the prophecy, but guess what? He isn't the chosen one because... Guess who is the chosen one? Guess who is the one who actually ends up defeating Emperor Palpatine? That's right. The Whammon. The amazing Rey. Oh, not just Rey. Rey Skywalker. Because, of course, she takes the last name of Luke Skywalker from what I have heard, according to the leaks. Um, just It's just absolutely pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic. No, I mean, if, if he didn't want to go to the premiere, I do not blame him one bit why would he want to go there to see them set a fire to the, the the amazing story that he that he poured so much of his time energy uh soul into why would he want to sit there and watch that happen why would he want to sit there and watch this entire thing burn to the ground um, and imagine, imagine if he was at the premiere and this is probably a reason why he probably wasn't even invited in my opinion if he was at the premiere and uh, let's say that afterwards, uh, some of the, uh, some of the press, um, decided to, to interview him or whatever. And let's say that he said something very negative about this movie that would immediately give this movie bad PR. Or let's say that he even walked out during the movie. Then yes, that would, that would be just as horrible. Um, so my guess is that he probably wasn't even invited. That's, that's what I think happened. And uh, it's a shame. It's an absolute shame how this entire thing went down. Uh, it's, it's a shame to look back at Kathleen Kennedy when she was sitting there with George Lucas in that first meeting and she was looking him in the eyes. Um, or it probably wasn't even their first meeting, but it was kind of the, the, the meeting that closed the deal, I guess, between uh, George Lucas and Disney and stuff. She sat there, looked him in, the, in his eyes and said that she was going to respect his legacy, respect his, his, his characters, continue their, their story. And she lied. She lied right in his face. And um, it, it's this entire thing is just so depressing that that we are at this point where Star Wars is nothing more than a joke. It's absolutely just depressing beyond belief. Um, anyway, after Kennedy gives her tribute to George Lucas, um, she hands the microphone to J.J. Abrams, who also began by praising Lucas. Without him, I wouldn't have had a childhood. It's a better privilege to work in a galaxy he created, but he isn't even here. Um, if he's so important, then why isn't he there? Then why isn't he there? I think it's because they know that the movie is garbage, that they know that George Lucas would hate that movie. I have, I, I do not doubt it for a moment that George Lucas would absolutely despise Rise of Skywalker. And he should. And I think a lot of people are. A lot of people who love the original trilogy, who love what George Lucas created, are not going to be happy with this movie. Um, and uh, everything that I've been hearing about this movie, it sounds like it's just absolutely horrible. Um, it's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Anyway... Um, it's 8% or 9% fun and 90 to 92% terrifying George Lucas or, uh, George Lucas, uh, JJ Abrams said being up there in front of the crowd, people assure me I felt the same at the force awakens, but I think those people are liars. This is entirely different than the, the force awakens premiere because <clears throat> at the force awakens premiere, people were excited. Most people were very happy to see what Disney was going to be doing with star Wars. We had a very positive mentality back then. And we, we had hope. We, we believe that, that Star Wars was in good hands. I believe that. Uh, so many other people believe that. And it, 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 we were wrong. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. We were absolutely wrong when it came down to that. Um, anyway, let's see here if there's anything here as far as uh, George Lucas and him uh, not being at the premiere stuff. Why George Lucas's absence from Rise of Skywalker premiere isn't shocking. Well, this ought to be good. Um, on Monday, Lucasfilm held the premiere for Rise of Skywalker, directed by J.J. Abrams at the Dolby Theater in Hollywood. <clears throat> in addition to the cast of the Rise of Skywalker franchise, alums like Harrison Ford and Ahmed Best, who played Jar Jar in the prequel trilogy, made appearances on the blue carpet. So Jar Jar Binks was there, but not George Lucas. 
Nice. Okay. Uh, Lucas forever changed popular culture when Star Wars debuted in 1977. Although Lucas told, uh, sold his ownership of Star Wars to Disney in 2012, he's been kept within orbit of the new films and shows, often acting as consultant, including even with The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, but apparently he, when he gave them like his ideas for what they could do with the, uh, the Dirt Disney uh, sequel trilogy... They, they were like, eh, yeah, you know, uh, we're not going to go with any of those ideas. We, we have our own grand ideas uh, for what's going to happen. But Star Wars isn't George Lucas's thing anymore. Unfortunately, I will add, it hasn't been in years. In 2015, in the lead up to Force Awakens, Lucas got real to Charlie Rose in an interview that revealed his raw feelings towards the sale of Star Wars, referring to it as a breakup. He called Disney white slavers, a widely criticized and clumsy articulation of his lingering anti-capitalist uh, sensibilities. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. It comes down to a simple rule of life. When you break, da break up with somebody, the first rule is no phone calls. Lucas said to Rose, the second rule, you don't go over to their house and see what they're doing. You just say, no, gone history, I'm moving forward. He added, every time you do something like that, you're opening the wound again. You have to put it behind you, and it's very, very hard to do so. Um, okay, let's see here. Let's just get down to, uh, this must be, okay, this must be, unfor uh, okay, so... Uh, right, wrote the Hollywood Reporter, following a private screening, Iger recalls Lucas, Lucas didn't hide his disappointment. There's nothing new, he said. In each of the films in the original trilogy, it was important to him to present new worlds, new stories, new characters, and new te technologies, which is absolutely correct. And it's one of the most uh, disappointing things about this trilogy is that there is nothing new. Like, all the planets look like planets that have already been created by George Lucas, and on and on. Um, added Iger, we'd intentionally created a world that was visually and tonally connected to the earlier films to not stray too far from what people loved and expected, and George was criticizing us for the very thing we were trying to do. Which, yeah, I, I understand why you'd want to have that familiarity when you're trying to break in a new generation into Star Wars, you know? I, I totally understand that. But at the same time, you still have to be creative and original and to, to a certain degree, right? Unfortunately, there is no clear answer why Lucas did not attend the premiere of The Rise of Skywalker. We can only assume he was invited and declined, which I don't... <clears throat> sorry, I'm, I'm losing my voice for some reason. Um, I don't even think he was invited. I ser seriously doubt that he was actually invited for, to the premiere. Whether Lucas was actually invited is also up for speculation. What we can say is that Luke, Lucas is pretty much done with Star Wars and has peacefully moved on. He's allowed himself to let the past die in a weird way that makes Lucas the ultimate Jedi Master among us all. And that's just really, really sad to think about. Lucas, the man who created Star Wars does not want to be associated with Star Wars anymore. Does not want to have anything to do with his baby anymore. Because his baby has been abused and uh, mutilated beyond belief by, by Disney. It's really sad. It's absolutely just horrible to think about. But anyway, those are kind of my thoughts about this whole thing. What do you think about George Lucas not being at the premiere for Rise of Skywalker? What do you think it means? Do you think he was invited? Do you think he wasn't invited? Also, go check out my channel, Josiah Rises. I am about to hit 10,000 subscribers, and I would appreciate some support over there. So go check out my channel, Josiah Rises. I would greatly appreciate that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you think, and I will talk to you all very soon in another video. Talk to you later. Bye. Hey everyone, it's Jeremy from GeeksAndGamers.com, and if you're a fan of Geeks and Gamers, please go to our website, visit our merchandise store. We have t-shirts, hoodies, hats, beanies, tank tops, and in the very near future, we're going to have many more products for you to choose from. So thank you for the support, we appreciate it, you guys have a great day, and we will talk to you later.